Welcome, Guido, here Hi. in Didov. It's so nice to have you here. Um, we were so excited about that appointment to exchange a bit about your work. And I know you're working since a uh, couple of years now with Kaim. And um, yes, let's talk a bit about your, your projects you're doing all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, in the back, we will show some of the work you did in the past. Mm -hmm. And so let's start with one of the first questions I think most people are interested in. Um, what do you think, what impact have your um, drawings, your project for, for public spaces, for, for public areas? Yeah, so firstly, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to come and visit the, the production uh, factory center here in Germany. It's been a long time. I've really wanted to, to come and visit, so I'm mm. very happy I'm here. Um, but yeah, I've been working in uh, public art for, I guess, more than 10 years now. And yeah, the, the, these projects, due to the quantity I'm doing, the more I do, the more I find they need to be, you know, the importance uh, that, that art uh, must have for the public space and for the viewer and for the lasting legacy of that area. So this is why I spend a lot of time uh, researching my projects now and making sure they really fit uh, the site and the place. And um, yeah, that, you can see by my work, they're very large scale. Um, this is another huge responsibility that I have because I'm making these works. Um, they can almost be seen as monuments uh, now. So I have a responsibility for quality, uh, for you know the content of the mural. I really try and think about uh, aspects of timelessness in art and also in, in quality and longevity. Um, yeah, so, but these murals, I guess, uh, they will have a lasting impact because they, mm. they're so large and they, they will be there for a long time. I think now you already did a lot of projects all over the world and I mm. think for sure you will have um, a special story <laughs> for yes. one project where you meet, for example, special people or the surrounding was exciting. Um, do you have such an experience which lasts for years now? Well, I would say all of them really, but um, th from what you see on the screen now, uh, these murals are in America and mostly in the Midwest region of the United States. And these are all now becoming landmarks for these towns and communities. Mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're almost waypoints for me because I build strong relationships with these places and I travel through, back through, and I visit my old murals now, sometimes four years later, and I, I, I see them again and I see my friends again, and these are all, uh, mm. uh, yeah, I guess, uh, legacy for me, but also for the place. Um, this, this mural here in Nashville, Tennessee is... I get it's very well known and you can see you can see it from a long way away you can see that you're arriving in this in this neighborhood you can see this figure on the building mm. and they become identifiers for for lots of people and uh yeah uh this is why it's very important that i i want these to last as you said you're doing large-scale projects mm -hmm. and i think in the beginning we're standing in front of a huge building mm -hmm. how do you start <laughs> and what are the the main challenges for you um, during so so amazing and huge uh, projects yeah I think it's just uh, it's a real dedication to the to the end goal in in mind so if I have a huge building in front of me it's really just a journey to the end the end product and th and these are just a series of uh, problem solving issues that I must resolve. That's to do with color, access, uh, the lifts that I might use. And also I'm very particular about matching the, the murals with the surrounding environment. So that would be, 
you know, the color of the wall, mm. the texture, the concrete, mm. or the environment, um, the, the, you know, the, the light is also important. And I spend a lot of time problem solving all these aspects. And then finally, there's the hard work of applying the, the, the job, you know. So, so you are, I think you're in advance before you start with the project, you're visiting the country, you're visiting the mm -hmm, site, mm -hmm. you're trying to get in touch with the, with the people. Yes. So how often do you visit a place before you start doing, doing the work? Yeah, in increasingly, uh, it's becoming more important that that part of it. I mean, I I know how to to execute a mural, but what's more important is the lasting uh, stories and themes, which is why I spend now maybe fifty percent of the time on photography research in that uh, in that community. For example, here in Germany in Pforzheim. Mm -hmm. I visited in February and I spent three weeks to, to gather a, a photographic story and then I can think about the mural. So um, it's quite, uh, it's, it, it's very important I think, you know, that the world of mural art now is very saturated with um, very fast paced actions, you know, mm -hmm. people want to, they don't care what it looks like in one year, they just want to get this up and it's, this is why I think, um, in the future, when we look back on this era of art, we want to have examples that, uh, you know, were made with uh, time as a consideration and thought and legacy and mm. meaning. Uh, you know, this, this is at least what I find important, you know, yes. in my work. Mm. Uh, increasingly, this is because I've already been in this industry for, yeah, more than 10 years making murals. So. The interesting point for me is that what you just mentioned is that you want long lasting projects, long lasting murals. Mm -hmm. And I guess that was one reason why you switched to Keim a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, so yes, for, for me, it would be also very interesting. Why are you using Keim paints on, on your murals? Mm -hmm. Well, you can see uh, in in my series of works, I'm very interested in the material of concrete, firstly. Uh, silos, the industrial buildings, they are kind of a, a signifier of modern architecture and also f uh, functional architecture. And these are often just simply the, the buildings I'm chosen mm -hmm. to, to to paint. So then I really, I, I, my whole style has grown around the use of, a, of a concrete. And I use concrete in a way that's uh, almost like paper, watercolor, I'm adding layers, thin layers, and I add many on top sometimes. Mm -hmm. It could be 10, 15 layers, I'm, it's impossible to count. But um, that process, uh, layering firstly white and uh, layers of tone on top, really gives me the effect that I, that I, that I like. Mm -hmm. And I just, I started reading about Design Lazur, um, yeah, about four or five years ago. Prior to that, I used to use aerosol mm -hmm. paint, and I just thought this is really uh, could be something uh, that that would work for me, because we know that if you dilute uh, normal acrylic type paints, you're weakening the binder, and we aren't going to get longevity mm -hmm. for that. So it just really was very uh, important, and I. I start to see that the use of the current product in what I'm doing, it really uh, aligns with classical painting in a way that no other paints can match, you know. It's important for me that the product will last and be durable is because of some of the locations where I'm painting. The weather can be really extreme. This is going from really hot in Australia to uh, minus 20, 30 in, in the northern Midwest in the US, where the conditions are, uh, you know, like extreme, basically. Yes, and um, for sure. I've seen silos, uh, which is a big uh, common recurring location where I've, mm. where I've been working. I've seen silos that have been completely painted white, 
50 years ago and when I arrive there it's gone there's no paint left and this is this is just due to the weather in this in this environment the way that concrete absorbs and water and in the end uh, acrylic type products are just going to come off so I spend a lot of time explaining this to people I want these murals to be there in 50 years I want um, all this work and effort that I'm putting into my work to to last the other thing is I'm very inspired by the way that the products from Kaim are actually made from pure natural earth pigments and and this this process is as old as as art and all paints uh, historically have been used from have been made from natural ochre, uh, natural red oxide. Mm. This is present in ancient Australian art, um, indigenous art. We have strong min uh, culture in Australia of uh, using minerals for, for for art and also across the world. And I just mm. think, um, you know, to to align yourself with using something as close to nature as possible. Uh, when working outside in the environment makes perfect sense, basically. Particularly, you can see that with um, the mural I made on in Australia, in, in Wellington Dam, because this is in a natural environment. It's, a, it's an area in a nas national park. You can see the earth and the rocks underneath mm. this, this site. And those colours that are in the rocks are yellow ochre and red oxide and... Um, you know, Western Australia is known for this uh, rich uh, mineral mm. um, environment. So you can see that the mural starts to blend with the environment. So much so that you can't see where it stops and finishes. That will bring me to, to the last question for, for the interview. So now we know where you get your inspiration from, mm -hmm. um, what you're doing. So what are your plans for, for the future? So I know the next project will be in Italy and then yeah. you will jump to the US, <laughs> then yes, you jump yes. back. So you are a lot on the road. So, but yeah. what are the plans for the, for the future? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm now, I guess I'm limiting myself to things that are important to me, uh, projects that have meaning and stories and strong research and they inspire my photography and they, mm. The, the, the story inspires me and so I, painting in Pforzheim just recently to me was a very strong project, very interesting project um, that, that you came to visit me on and mm -hmm. you know this kind of a project uh, is, is a, uh, I'll continue about Italy but um, my upcoming projects will be continuing to work on these large-scale uh, monument type projects so the most uh, uh, the one that will be upcoming is in Bari in Italy in the port and you know I've been very uh, we've been discussing this using a product that can last in that environment of this of the sea and the salt is super important to me so mm. you know this is going to be a very important project for me and um, it's, it's, it's going to be, I guess, very, very big. Yes. Um, but after that, yes, I'm, I'm going to be, next year, I'm going to be working in North Dakota in, uh, in, a, in a small community there to continue this series of large-scale works mm -hmm. in the U.S. Um, but I am working on that uh, over time. It's continuing. I've now made uh, almost a continuous line in the Midwest of murals from Texas to Minnesota on silo structures. Uh, and they, they have gone off to the south too, South Carolina, mm -hmm. Tennessee. And this is kind of slow rolling. At the same time, I do other small projects in Europe or Australia. And mm -hmm. yeah, it keeps me, keeps me busy. But I'm based in the US now.